inviting me to your meetings and it is so wonderful to see so many uh, registered and participating members in spite of the fact that we have a plethora of uh, zoom meetings happening and uh, people are actually sometimes finding it difficult to grapple with number of zoom meetings that are happening so uh, dr palni and dr tirumurgan told me to pick up a topic which is unusual and different and advanced and i was wondering what to do and those days i was reading a few uh, articles on how artificial intelligence is being used shrinivasan sir good afternoon sir no, good afternoon on how artificial intelligence is being used in uh, neonatology and other subjects so rather than trying to tell uh, what uh, how is utilization alone is we'll try and go through a few steps on how artificial intelligence works and what we are doing so in the next 15 minutes we will hear about the methods of artificial intelligence and how we can apply it in our daily life i hope my screen is visible to you uh, yes sir it's yeah. visible yeah this uh, aspect of artificial intelligence is known to many of non medical people and to some medical people many of the advanced telephones and mobile phones have attached smart watches or health bands that can be attached to your wrist or to your arm and continuously can give you your heart rate blood pressure changes through the day the number of steps you have walked whether you achieved your targets it can push you to do more and there are some others who can do even more smarter things like picking up pulse oximetry and even doing some small ultrasounds so this kind of intelligence has been already used and being applied and reached to every person in the world where are you just like dr tirumurugan and the chairperson introduced it has been improved it has uh, almost 10 years back that i went to singapore uh, to the kk children's hospital which is one of the largest hospitals children's hospital they were already using uh, the what you can call as artificial intelligence to reduce errors in uh, neonatal practice for example if there is a baby born to a mother with risk factors for infection instead of trying to say i will give amikacin cefotaxim another of my friend may give gentamicin the doses might differ the way it is infused might differ the computer will only be asking that what is the weight of the baby you enter what is the age in days and what is the indication for which you want to give antibiotic if you say it is for maternal risk factors then it may choose a unit protocol antibiotic the dose the spelling of the antibiotic the rate at which it should be infused the milligrams per kg will all be correctly sent to the pharmacy the pharmacy would pick up the correct medication barcode so there is no risk of look alike or sound alike drugs being picked up even there is a robot who is picking up the right amount of medicine from the pharmacy while i seen this happen of course the robots don't look like the one in rajnikanth movie they are just a few syringes which go in and take a premeasured amount of medicine dialed in the drug comes to the nicu and it is labeled with a color code which is specific to the time which it has to be given so if you see a green one it means it is for morning so if you find a green in the afternoon you know there is an error happening and then the medical records com- confirms by your tick that the medicine has been given ensuring that there was no error in this process now we'll see how the computer has been doing this and how we can use this further i'm sure srinivasan sir will have something to say at the end on this statement that learning is a process and it is not a collection of facts or just procedural knowledge so uh, as a doctor when we work we learn a lot from the books and we learn a lot from the wards and procedures how to do this is not learning learning involves a little bit more than that that we'll see across the few slides and we know that human beings have this uncanny ability to learn but can we make a machine learn this is called machine learning and can we use this machine learning to augment to supplement to improve what we are doing and maybe even replace human learning at the end of the day 
so learning in human beings has uh, the following uh, steps or parts the first one is memorizing what we do in the smallest classes where we are told that there are nine planets there is a sun and there is a solar system without understanding the meaning of all the three words i am sure a child can't imagine what a sun or a planet or a solar system looks like but he can answer a question this is pure memorizing and then we undergo understanding after some time he recognizes the same solar system in the museum that he sees in a cartoon movie and he can connect the two and therefore he is able to somehow understand all these things that he memorized if there was no memory then he could not connect with understanding so how does a computer do this how does artificial and intelligence does this you may show pictures of several ducks and tell the computer this is a duck this is a duck and then you show a rabbit and say it's not a duck and you show an another animal and so it's not a duck and therefore this is called supervised learning or classification algorithm and the next time the computer is shown the picture of an animal it can say whether it's a duck or not duck or not this is called predictive models now how is it used like we all have fingerprint laptops or phones that open only to a fingerprint so you gave your fingerprint to the computer in the laptop or in your phone it recognizes and allows you to open if it matches face recognition again in the mobile phones it can open only when your face is shown in fact very smart uh, google apps are there where if you start searching photographs that are stored in your phone it will ask you whose photos do you want it will select the photo and uh, maybe you can say it is my grandfather grandmother husband wife and then it currently picks up all the photos that are stored in your computer with that same matched face in medical profession where how it's being used instead of doing gestation assessment in a subjective manner it can be done in an objective manner like this so you can just show the foot of the baby to the computer and it can find out whether there are multiple creases on the foot or not or very simple creases and how much third of it is occupied by this it can make a assessment of the gestation the advantage obviously being that somebody who is not trained like a nurse or a or even a health worker can use this tool and secondly there is limited subjectivity going further step it is very advanced use has been recently done that cooling studies were happening across the world especially they were trying to find the market in developing countries like india which is very huge market but how do they show whether the outcome is working in india so the best biomarker for improvement in asphyxia that means by what a biomarker means is that something that can predict what may happen when the child is 10 years old so if you find an mri which is good you may find it to correlate with a 10 year outcome an mri which is bad may indicate bad outcome despite or because of asphyxia or despite cooling but who reads this mri we all know that we orders for mris but when the picture comes back we are pretending to hold this against the the sunlight or against the screen looking through it and hoping that the family has brought a printed report along with it the poor family thinks that we are an expert in seeing through it but smarter technology has been used for example we know that in asphyxia one of the major predictors is basal ganglia hyperintensity so the computer is taught that this is the problem and it picks up hyperintensity in this way it matches pixel to pixel and shows how the change in pixel color happens from basal ganglia outwards so it can pick out this part of the mri match the pixel intensity and then give you a information that this is a bad mri or a good mri you can feed posterior limb of internal capsule you can pick up and feed whatever you want and then it can report this findings similar things are being done in reading rop images in fact your ecg also in adults when if you look at good machines they will not just take an ecg they will give you the qr interval rr interval and they will also tell you that there is an in fact some of them even say that there is an acute ischemia consider taking sorbitrate this much also the computer says so uh, the next level of learning that we do is not only memorized material and matching and comparing we use this learned material in a way to solve a defined problem so after some time we start uh, trying to solve the problems with this knowledge now this is called supervised learning algorithms Uh, for example in the stock market 
how a smart computer does is it goes back and looks at the stock market patterns in the last 3 years and then it is able to tell the pattern which is going to come in based on which month of the year that the stock goes up or which company stock goes up or what happens in the market in gold price and then what will happen to the share market price so if you have an app of that kind simply by studying the patterns of the last few years predictive models can be made and it can give you an alert just like a met department gives you an alert that based on the change of the cloud pattern rains may come orange zone red zone alert all these are coming these are called supervised learning you don't have a human being looking at the clouds in the sky and trying to tell you that you are going to have very heavy rain similar model have been used for rds prediction we all learned during our studies trying to do a shake test by looking shaking the uh, test tube full of surfactant mixed with sodium hydroxide and seeing the stability of bubbles but a simpler method is being used where you can pass a light through the gastric aspirate and a mobile phone app may pick up how much light has gone through and then say oh, okay this much surfactant is there and it can tell you what is the rate of rds if you feed the gestation also along with apps are there for educating parents at the birth of a very preterm baby it's called the pisa app preterm infant survival assessment so you can feed items like gestation age birth weight gender whether it is one or two babies antenatal steroids were given or not and it will take data from that hospital and tell you what is the chances of prediction of survival of this baby now what is reinforced learning is the next step once a computer has made a prediction you can tell the computer was it good or bad and based on this the computer will take away the bad ones and keep the bad models to be able to tell you for example in the same app some of you might have seen in the google where it picks up the pictures from your library some of them it will be confused whether it picked up correctly or not and ask you to label whether it uh, classified correctly or not if you say yes oh this is the correct person you classified then it uses those features for matching which it was already using and say i am good continue to use this algorithm but if it if you say no no this is not the right person then it will say the algorithm which i used like the shape of the nose or the eyes or the lips or the teeth is not working well i need to find some other smart way of trying to recognize the pictures so it can do this automatically the next step of learning by the machine and human beings is to examine a problem and by breaking it into smaller components and then trying to solve the problem this is a very very smart thing that is being used in the whole world and it is called as big data that is uh, unsupervised learning so i have no idea which medicines are working in covid 19 somebody is giving remdesivir somebody is giving chloroquine somebody gives azithromycin somebody gives favapir and everyone is saying that they saw five patients getting better 10 getting better so how do i do this if everyone enters the data like just the age of the patient the comorbidities outcome and the drug given now with something like uh, 7 lakh deaths that have already happened as an outcome in the world and almost 100 time more people being affected the computer has a huge data available based on the comorbidities age and the medication given and it does not know which one is more predictive so what it will simply do it will form clusters of information from unorganized data which is just like this about covid-19 now it does not know which one correlates so it will just make one cluster of age one cluster of drug one cluster of diabetes and then it will try and connect just like we do in research with smaller data it will find out which has better relationship with outcomes and it will give you a predictive model this kind of uh, um, research helped in finding out that necrotizing colitis in newborns is related to the microbiota because when they analyze the germs in the stool of babies they have born newly or as they develop nec there's a plethora of huge number of germs in the stool but then they found out that when there was a monochrome pattern what is called dysbiosis or bad pattern then they developed nec whereas there's a mixed pattern and some of the healthy germs were there nec was less and they were able to tell us that having a monochrome after giving antibiotic or not having probiotic caused nec similar models are being used to predict sepsis in newborns where you feed data coming from the 
pulse oximeter or the multi channel monitor continuously into the computer so every minute it's getting the heart rate saturation blood pressure and temperature of the baby and then looking at this for several days in the unit you have to just enter whether sepsis happened or not even at the end of the day and this computer then tries to correlate various variables with the outcome and will soon give you a predictive modeling what is called decision making systems and this is was used in a hero destruction where heart rate characteristics was found to be very very strong predictor of sepsis in units these are called as decision support systems even smarter use of uh, computers is now happening you can have an arterial line running from the uh, from the baby and being fed to the computer and dial in and say i do not want a po2 of more than 70 so if the po2 of the baby goes more than 70 automatically it will reduce the fio2 in the computer so you can reduce the rate of rop and hyperoxia related injuries this is already available in clinical practice similarly this is called as apnea boot we know of pulse oximeters which can pick up apnea in babies by picking up saturation and heart rate but this apnea boot has a very very small uh, vibrator also in the uh, in this device so when the baby's saturation and heart beat falls this vibrator will simply give a vibration like a nurse or a doctor might have given a stimulation and the apnea will get aborted so the amount of time in which baby spends hypoxia and bradycardia can be dramatically reduced there there was some uh, role we could play from our institution when this was being developed by sri chitra institute in developing this apnea boot now you may wonder that what is different actually there is nothing different the computer is only doing what you ordered but you can see in this cartoon the boss is telling the employee see the mistakes you make are the same mistakes as the computer makes are you equally good or equally bad but the computer does it several thousand times faster than you can so he's a more useful guy than you are there are ultimate steps that are being done in trying to use artificial intelligence they have studied how the umbilical cord and the placenta is made and various devices like the amount of flow of fluid blood all this is trying to be looking at making an artificial placenta or artificial womb to take care of a preterm baby the last is two steps of learning are where we are wondering whether artificial intelligence can go to the next level what do we do after we have learned something underlay and apply and as you get as more and more senior in age in personal life as well as in profession you stop saying just that crp is positive i will give antibiotic or blood count is less i will give transfusion you also look at the face and say oh this family comes from very far i don't think he can come back again so can i give a blood transfusion at 2 grams more than what i would have done otherwise because they cannot afford it you may choose an a, a vaccination which is little uh, less expensive you may give some other credences based on many other social standards these are things which a computer can find very difficult to understand also thinking of alternate or new solutions which were not existing what is called creative learning this can also probably be very challenging for a computer to do which human beings can do so whether this next level of judging what is the application of this decision support system whether it can work in the given scenario and finding and creating new solutions is something based on the value systems or social systems is something which uh, they are trying to do even with machine learning at the next level this is a very very old picture when uh, a fiction novel was written when they thought how you can enhance learning in children and you can just connect them and train them in one second in fact i have seen this in one of the movies in pk where this gentleman holds the hand of uh, a person and he can grab the language in one second so if you can do that and you can get the process of the first few steps of learning very fast in a human being that is memory analyzing and things like that and breaking down into small parts developing decision support systems then the next level of intelligence creative learning and judgment will have more time and can be used better eventually we need to work together it should not happen that the computer replaces us in fact there was a very wonderful cartoon which says as the artificial intelligence goes up the human intelligence goes down and i have to confess i am a very typical example of that my wife